I think it's time that we record a project on the new 1500. There's something that I've been needing to make for a while, and that is a mounting plate for this Aroa base. While it does have these little slots for toe clamps, I'm not gonna toe clamp this thing. I wanna make a, a mounting plate that'll fit on my Saunders plate. And I don't think I've said this out loud yet, this little one is actually for my office mill, whereas I'm gonna get a larger pneumatic one that will be compatible with a robot, and that is what's gonna go on the 1500. But I will be using the 1500 to make this mounting plate. The plate we're making today is gonna to be loosely based on these mounting plates that I made for uh, four jaw chucks and like the collet chuck I have, but with some improvements and lessons learned from time and experience. Step one is to unload any tools from the mill that we're not gonna be using and to replace them with the tools that we do need. Removing a tool from this mill is super easy. You just click on that box, type in the tool number of the tool you want to remove hit yes, I want to fetch it. It'll, the ATC will switch to that tool. Then you can just open the door and this is a lot easier with two hands. Then you can just use the button and manually remove the tool. Once the tool is out, all you have to do is come back over here and tell the mill that it's on tool zero and to not use the ATC to store the tool. So that tool is removed. I don't have my systems in place yet, so I'm not really using this feature, but this thing can store a thousand tool offsets, um, including the probe and the master tool for calibration. And if I put this back in and told it that it was tool two, it would know exactly what length it was. And so I wouldn't have to reset it. Eventually here, when I get my act together, I'll keep a whole bunch of tools in here preset and ready to go. I'll just have to keep track of the tool number and the mill will be able to do everything else. My setup here is nothing particularly special or unusual. I have a big old block of steel in serrated jaws in my six inch vise. My work coordinate system I am setting in the top center of this material, which I will just probe in. Pathpilot has this fun probing routine that automatically will probe for the center of your part. You don't have to guess onto the size of your material. It'll just kind of figure it out itself. It's a little bit slower than the way that the Haas does it in terms of the actual probing time, but it requires a whole lot less thought and can generally just works without needing any fussing around or extra button presses. Just one button press and it finds the center of the material for you. And with that done, we can find our Z height again with one button press. Okay. All right, we should be good to get started here. So I'm gonna close the door, turn down the max speed, and slowly let it come in. I'm having chatter issues with this half inch tool. The strange thing is these are more conservative speeds and feeds than I've run in the past with a different tool. Though I suppose also a different setup. So I'm not entirely sure what's going on here. I assume it's still just a speeds and feeds things. But like I said, this is a different tool. So maybe it's something with the tool. All right, I got those feeds and feeds issues worked out. I had to call my buddy Harrison who has experience with a normal sized mill. I'm used to doing tiny stuff. So these half inch end mills are just outside of my, um, well, my experience at this point. It'll just take me some practice to get used to what normal feeds and speeds are. I'll eventually build out my tool library, have all that stuff built in. But in the meantime, I'm gonna be doing some trial and error. There's nothing too crazy on this part. So the cam is fairly simple. I start with a 3D adaptive using a four flute half inch end mill to do the bulk of the material removal before using that same tool to do a flat operation and face off the top of the material. 
Then I moved to a 2D contour to clean up the outside perimeter and then a boring operation to clear out the mounting hole. Those are of course the mounting holes that'll let us secure this fixture to my Saunders plate. Then we do the smaller mounting holes that'll let us mount the Aroa pallet system to this fixture. Using that same tool, I clean up the sides and bottom of the locating pocket before switching to a 3 16 inch ball mill to surface in some fillets on the perimeter of the part. I had some pull out issues with the end mill in the tool holder, tool holder problem. I'm working on getting that fixed right now. Those tool pull out issues happened during roughing, but it shouldn't have actually made a difference on the final part because it would have finished everything at the right depth anyway. It just roughed it a little bit more than it had to. The part is looking super, super good. All of the blends came out really good. My wall finishes are great. The bottom of that hole is a little bit ugly, but that's okay because the bottom of the hole is going to go away soon. The one thing is my block, I can't tell if it is a perfect fit or if it's a little bit too tight. And I'm not sure how to tell because if it's too tight, it may not be sitting all the way flat down on the bottom. So I'm gonna open up this pocket by maybe a thou and test that again. It's important that it is at least somewhat tight on this thing because the pallets are going to inherit their tram from this thing, which inherits its tram from this wall right there, or well, those four walls. So I'm just gonna do a light skim cut there and do another test fit. All right, and that fits in there really well. It's definitely on the bottom because I can feel just the tiniest a bit of wiggle, but that is, well, I know that the amount of wiggle is about a thou because that's how much I opened it up by. That'll work really well. I'll just push it to the back when I tighten the screws and that way it'll inherit the alignment from uh, this pocket. Or actually I can push it into this corner here just to be doubly sure. That way when I tighten it down, I'll know it is exactly square to the fixture plate. Our second operation should be good to go. Basically the way this is gonna work is we are going to face off this hat here, and then I'm gonna come in and probe the side of this material once it's exposed, just to make sure our X, Y position is correct. And then we'll go with the rest of the features. That was pretty much effortless and it looks great. The one thing I need to do is I deliberately left some stock to leave on these pinholes and now I'm just gonna slowly dial in the exact diameter on those so it's a nice tight fit on the pins. All right, this should be just slightly undersized or maybe dead on, depending on the actual diameter of the tool. Most end mills are a little bit undersized, so if you cut dead on, generally your part comes out uh, with some extra material on it but we'll find out. It's so close, but not quite. Ooh, that's perfect. That's a really nice fit. It's about two days later. I brought this thing with me to school and put it on one of the grinders that I have access to there now that I'm faculty and it's looking super good. I'm still figuring out how to get better at grinding. The school isn't really equipped for it since that's not actually something that I'm supposed to be teaching there. They just happen to have a grinder or several of them. But I am super happy with how this turned out. Let's get the fixture mounted on it and I guess put it on the mill. My pins are just a little bit too long. It doesn't quite sit all the way down on the table. All right, let's try this one more time. I shorten those pins. Oh yeah, perfect fit, no wiggle, that is perfect. I'll need to make an investment in some more fixtures, but I think we have a working thing. So this will easily let me swap out fixtures, swap out parts, load stuff offline and swap it in with a known and repeatable zero point. I'm really happy with how this came out and it's gonna make a big difference to my workflow. Now the ultimate goal is to get a matching pallet system over here on the Tormach. The Tormach, is great for removing a lot of material quickly, but the Haas spindle still spins four times faster, which means it's a lot better for small tools. This will give me a workflow where I can start roughing a part on here and then switch it over to the Haas 
to finish up some of the finer details. The other goal with this system is to have a pneumatic one of these on the Tormach so that a robot can load and unload fixtures. I still have a lot of learning and process development to go before we get there, but that is my goal for 2025, a robot automating this mill with a EROA pallet system. Anyway, thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video. Robot on this mill.